Welcome back. I'm Ray Ortega from thepodcasterstudio.com, and this is how to set up a Canon DSLR for video. The key here is to get the camera off of auto, where the camera decides your settings, and into manual, where you have total control over the look of your video. This will help to ensure a clean and consistent image. I'm using a Canon 60D with a Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter 2.8 lens. Uh, these settings will apply pretty much to any DSLR camera since they are all basic video principles. And to see a list of all the gear I used in this video, uh, please check the link in this video's description where you'll also find a link to my gear page where I list all the gear that I use and a nice paragraph about why I purchased that gear. And now we'll set up two things that you'll want to set once and forget about, basically. The frames per second, or FPS, and the shutter speed. Okay, so starting with frames per second, or FPS, we'll choose 24. Because of its standard in American film, it's kind of what we're used to seeing in terms of motion blur. Uh, it's smaller file size, and because this is what you'll see most professional DSLR shooters filming at. And it's how I set up my camera and what I shoot at most of the time. Setting the FPS to 24 then gives us a guide about how to set up our shutter speed. So using the 180 degree shutter rule, which essentially means we're doubling the number of frames you're shooting at. In our case, that would be 48. However, in the case of Canon DSLRs, we don't have 48, so we go with 50. It's close enough to the 180 degree rule, and it works great for our purposes. Uh, if we were shooting at 30 frames per second, then you double your shutter, and that would be 60. So you can see how that works. All of these factors help play into getting the quote-unquote film look, uh, which is the relation of shutter speed to frame rate, giving us that same look in terms of motion blur that you're used to seeing in American filmmaking. And this is the primary reason we leave these settings as is once we set them. We don't really make adjustments to them. We'll get our exposure based on other settings. So again, these are just general rules, and of course rules are made to be broken, but in our case, we want to start with our cameras on these settings, and then when you have a reason to change them and you know what you're doing, go ahead and change them the way you need for your video production. But again, this is how I set up my camera to get an image like you're seeing right now. Next, we move on to the two remaining settings that will allow us to control our exposure, so which is how much light gets into the camera. The first of those settings is ISO, and ISO is just a setting that controls the sensor's sensitivity to light. So as you increase this number, the sensor digitally enhances its ability to make the image brighter. And of course, this comes at a price, uh, which is digital noise. So that's the graininess you might be seeing in your video, and perhaps one of the reasons you're actually watching this video, because you're getting that grainy look, and you want to learn how to set it up better to get a clean, high-quality image. So as a result, we want to use the lowest ISO as possible in any given shooting situation. So this too, however, comes with a caveat, right? So for Canon DSLRs, such as the 60D, which have one-third increments that you can adjust the ISO, you'll want to use specific ISOs to achieve the cleanest image. And oftentimes you'll hear these referred to as native ISOs. Uh, these ISO numbers are the ones that will look best, and I won't go into whether or not these actually are native ISOs, but just know that these have been tested and they look the best for a particular type of camera like a Canon 60D. And I'll put a link in this video's description where you can watch the test online and you'll see that this makes a difference. So set your camera to 160 if you have that option, otherwise set it to your lowest ISO setting, likely ISO 100. And from there, you'll increase your ISO as needed, but only as a last resort. So that is after you've maxed out your next setting, which is aperture and then you go to ISO. Okay, so aperture will also determine the amount of light that gets into your camera, and this is our best control for exposure because it's clean light. That is light that's not digitally enhanced and therefore prone to noise, and that's just coming through the lens, and depending on how wide or how narrow the blades are, 
open inside the lens. So this is not the only thing Aperture controls. However, in the context of this video, we'll be setting it as to allow for the best exposure and thus the best looking image possible. But for the purpose of this video, getting a clean image, we'll start by setting our aperture on our lens to its widest setting. So on this lens, that's 2.8. On your lens, it'll be whatever your lowest number is, such as 2.8, okay? Just depends on the lens you have. And so these are four basic settings where you'll wanna start to achieve a clean image like the one you're seeing here. And again, these are just general rules, but when used correctly to achieve proper exposure without going too far, say in the case of ISO, you'll get that high quality image that you've come to expect from Canon DSLRs. So a couple quick settings in the menu that you'll also wanna set and forget are picture profile, highlight tone priority, and auto lighting optimizer. We'll take our picture profile and set that to neutral or standard, highlight tone priority to off, and the auto lighting optimizer to standard lower off. Okay, so, but before pressing the record button, you wanna make sure you have proper focus and white balance. And so to achieve a good focus, use the digital zoom to punch in to your image and make sure that your primary subject is in sharp focus. And these cameras give us a cool option with this digital zoom to do that. And for white balance, uh, adjust your setting to match your lighting conditions, you know, just as a general beginning rule. Daylight or tungsten are gonna be the main ones. If you're in run and gun, you might be able to use auto white balance, but for the most part, you wanna dial in the correct white balance. Okay, so these are just basic settings to learn and start with to get your camera to record nice, high quality, clean images. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And check out the archives where we have all kinds of other instructional DSLR videos. And we will see you next time. Frames per second or FPS, choose 24. Setting the FPS to 24 then gives us a guide about how to set up our shutter speed. We don't have 48, so we go with 50. ISO 160, otherwise set it to lowest setting possible, uh, likely ISO 100.